Hey, welcome back to Square Body Stuff. I'm Chad. We got my boy Squeaky in the shop again, uh, trying to get him ready to do some drag racing this year. Uh, trying to get some weight savings, get anything out of there I don't want. So what we're going to do now is remove the heater box. Uh, he's a heater only cab. There's there's no AC, so it's pretty straightforward. So I figured I'd make mainly just a how-to video on how to remove the heater box and show how to take the heater core out and replace the heater core. Uh, so it'd be kind of a how-to video and an update video on what I'm doing, where I'm at with this truck. Of course, if you're new to this channel, uh, check out the link up here in the corner. I'll, I'll put a link to the playlist for this truck up there. Go check it out uh, to kind of get you up to speed on what I'm doing with this truck. All right, real quick before we get started on that, uh, I sometimes forget to actually mention my merchandise and all that stuff. And uh, hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. Hit the ring or ring that bell. Get notifications when I put new videos up. Uh, go check out my Teespring store. Down, it's down in the description box below. Click on that. Uh, that'll take you to where my merchandise is at. I got hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, uh, some stickers and stuff like that. Uh, I got several different designs. I haven't done a real good job of promoting it. Uh, so anyways, I'll put have some pictures floating around here of what I've got. Go check that out, and now let's get the wrenching. Now one of the first things you'll need to do is drain your coolant down so you can disconnect your hoses. Uh, I don't have any hoses on there. I didn't put them back in when I put the motor back in the truck. So I've got that step taken care of, but make sure your engine's cooled off, drain your radiator um, so you can disconnect your lines. Now on doing the heater core itself, you won't need to do anything with the blower motor or anything like that on the outside. Uh, we'll go on the inside and see what we got on the inside to take care of. On the inside, the first thing you'll need to do in here is remove your glove box, which you'll have some screws down here, take them out. Um, I won't need to worry about that on this one because my glove box is broke and it just removes like that. I hope my light is good enough for you guys to see. Uh, you'll need to disconnect. Take these screws out here for your cables. It's got these little clips uh, that just hold the uh, cable on the damper door. Remove those clips. On the inside, I believe there's a sc screw here and a screw there. And I think the other two are you access from the outside. And I believe, if I remember right, that's all it takes to get this box out. But we'll tear into it and hopefully you guys can figure out what I'm doing. I need a 930 seconds, at least that's what this one is. Take those loose. Next we'll need a flathead screwdriver or some sort of prying apparatus. Get these clips up. They're not always the easiest thing, but just kind of work them side to side. Get them up. Try not to break them. That one loose. Got that one loose. And I got this one bolt over here. I know earlier in the video I said this one over here is, is a, on the inside, but it's actually a stud that goes to the outside. 
and there's one up top and I believe that we're done on the end oh we're not done on the inside I know earlier when I was trying to explain you know what all we need to do I missed the uh, this guy here that's the damper door for the defrost switch from defrost and heat so we got to take this clip off and that screw out get that cable off there and I think we will be done inside other than if you're let me see if we get the light in there the uh, uh, lights not very good I'll point in that direction bear with me but your uh, defrost vent uh, duct work has got a screw there you'll have to take out mine's already disconnected for some reason it's broke so i'm not gonna have to worry about that on mine uh, yours may be the same they a lot of times they don't seal up right there should be a piece of foam or something in there to help seal it but mine's missing and i'm not going to worry about it anymore uh, now when you if you're going to be i'm not going to be reinstalling this but if you're reinstalling yours, make sure that foam is in there so it makes a good seal because that's a lot of issues with the defroster not working very well. There's not a, a seal inside there. It's, you can see there's a gap between the ductwork. There's supposed to be a piece of foam or something in there. But let's get this damper door unhooked. I think that'll be it on the inside. Right, under the hood we'll have a stud over here with the nut on it stud here and a stud here I put a little WD-40 on them to loosen them up a little bit but mine's actually missing a stud up here I found what was left of it uh, it's actually broke off the whole ear and everything on the inside found this on top of the heater box on the inside of the cab that doesn't really matter I'm not putting mine back together so I'm not worried about it and I'm going to cheat and use my wham pack. There's that one. I'll just throw that one on the floor. And I'll throw that one on the floor. Now, I will suggest that if you're going to be reinstalling yours, if they're kind of corroded a little bit, I would actually use a ratchet. Uh, so... If it feels like the stud's gonna twist off or something, you can stop. Uh, if you use an impact, it it may not give you enough time, may just snap off. So I would suggest actually using a ratchet on that. I'm not reinstalling mine, so I'm not worried about it. Now everything's loose. Uh, yours may be stuck a little bit from sitting in there for 40 years, or 30 years. Mine came loose pretty easily, and you just kind of, kind of wiggle it out of there. Not a big deal. Watch out for any critters that might be living in there. I've got all my insulation was stuck to that, but I'm not worried about that. There's insulation there. You may have a rat's nest in there. Who knows what all you might find whenever you take your heater box out. We'll set this on a workbench and I'll show you how to remove the heater core itself. Now now we got on the workbench. Of course this stuff here should have stayed with the cab. But I think a critter's got to mine and tore it all up. So mine's stuck to the box. But this should be stuck to your cab. It shouldn't be on the box. If it is, uh, you're in the same boat that I am. That's going to go in the trash. You'll have four retaining screws in there, one on each corner. Take them out, and then the heater core will come out. You put the other one in and go from there. Voila, 
there's your heater core. Now you get your new one. Everything's pretty much reverse of removal. And nothing much to it. I think I'm not going to, I'm going to spare you the uh, time of watching me put it back together. Because I think if you've made it this far, you could probably figure out how to put it back together. There's really nothing to it. Uh, set your heater core back in there. Make sure your lines are lined back up when you go back through the firewall. Uh, hook all your cables back up. There's no adjustment on those. So it's pretty straightforward on that. Uh, hook your coolant lines back up. Fill your radiator back up. Double check everything. And you should be good to go. Now, if you want to go ahead and if you're doing something like I'm doing and removing your heater box on the or the box on the outside, uh, of course you unhook your wires, and there's three bolts that hold it in there. There's one here, easy to get to. There's one down there, it's pretty hard to get to, and there's another one back here, it's hard to get to. It's a lot easier to get to them. If your inner fender is out, and that's what I'm going to do because I plan on pulling these inner fenders out anyways just to shave a little bit more weight off the front end. It ain't much, but it'll help. Uh, so I'm not going to worry about showing anybody you know, how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. It's just three bolts, and it pulls off in the wires. You know, nothing, nothing big there. So I think we're going to end the video off here. That's pretty much all I can think about to show you on removing and installing a heater core on your non-AC cab. Uh, I know I didn't show you how to reinstall it, but it's it's really straightforward. I think you can pick it up. Not a big deal. Just to keep this video a little bit shorter so you're not being bored to death watching me work on stuff. But if you have any questions, post it down in the comments below. Until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.